all right hey everybody welcome back now we got a mid-october day and it's blackfish blackfish time so i'm gonna head out to uh, a little deeper i want to see if they're deeper right off the bat everyone knows they're shallow this time of year water temps are 66 try for them deeper first and i'll move shallower if it doesn't work out try to get some underwater as well we got green crabs asian crabs and shrimp so we're gonna try some different baits and I'm pretty excited it's a calm day I waited for a calm day to come out here like the water was pretty clear as well so and I waited a little bit for this storm to kind of settle out so yeah hopefully it works out I'm set up somewhat nicely that's what it was like last year though too like earlier season the porgies are there you know yeah. they become an interference fish really what is it huh dog fish that's not good Oh, nice sea bass. It's about 14. Oh, uh, they got to be 15. Yeah, it's a, this is a 14. I hit the bottom dude what in the world it almost felt like he he hit it again once I released him oh no I know what it was I never took it off the hook Okay. Okay. Oh. Yep. Oh, it's a tiny blackfish. <laughs> Yeah, targeted species. So tiny though. <laughs> Little female. Hopefully this picks up. It, yeah. Right around one o'clock, I think. Yeah, it's... Alright, come on. I'm just feeding porgies at this point. There we go. Oh, uh, doesn't feel very big though. Yeah, it's a blackfish. All right, they're starting, starting to come, going, get, getting bigger, right? Getting in the right direction. <laughs> Thanks, but not much. Are you, are you not getting blackfished? Ah. 
All right, got a decent one. It's getting bigger. Oh. Not a keeper. 15, uh, less. 14. 14 and change. It's a good sign though. They're hitting it as soon as it falls down. Boom. Oh. Oh. Crushing it on the fall. Feels like a sea bass or a porgy, maybe. Big porgy. Oh, big blackfish. Very subtle bite. Crabs working the best. start leaving the shell on because bite's pretty hot right now and so I'm looking for that bigger one it's kind of bully bite it's not gonna do much different just gonna keep keep chugging away and tide should only get less strong so I don't need to adjust my weight just need to catch a bigger fish Thank <laughs> you. 
I think I have a good one. So he hit it on the fall. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be very close. So close. I don't want to. I don't want to cheat. Push his lip in. Yeah. He's so freaking close. All right. So there. Nah. He's not. He's not. So close. Oh, man. Dude, like, seriously, like an eighth of an inch away. But I tell you right now, though, this bite is hot because that fish took that crab on the fall. I didn't even hit the bottom. That's how you know they're fired up. Oh. He had a good first run. Now he's giving up. Porgy. There's so many mouths down there. You can just, I can feel them like you prick, you prick one of the mouths when you slow lift. Feels different. Sea bass. I'm getting bites all the time. Mostly small fish, though. Like that. I mean, I'll take this action any day, but... I really want to see if I can get a keeper. Something really heavy. Oh, that's a shark. 
Oh, that's not good. It's a smooth. Some teeth. Got go good. Hey, bud. How you doing? I'm gonna put a little heavier. This is probably a one or a three quarter. I think before I was a, it was only a half. And now it's holding bottom, but yeah, this will make it easier. getting bites and there's all small fish I still think it's better to stay where you are and just hope that bigger ones come because a lot of times the small ones attract the big ones and you know, you've built up a lot of life you've built up action you know fish are getting curious down there and if you go and move to try and find bigger fish for me many times when I do that I lose the hot bite and I don't catch a big fish either a good bite I might have lost it there <laughs> oh dang Mondo Porgy the heck I'll keep this one too. I'm not so sure anymore that I'm gonna get a blackfish. Alright, seltzer intermission. I really enjoyed this one actually, apple cider. <sighs> yeah, not bad. I mean, it does have a slight chemically fake taste to it but really gets you in the fall spirit mm. all right black fish down there I think it's just there's a lot of other fish still because the water's warm so it makes catching the blackfish a little difficult with all the interference fish going on which I don't mind catching porgies and sea bass but if it was keeper sea bass
maybe a sea bass. Oh, blackfish. Cool colors. Look at those guys' colors. It's a big tip. A decent blackfish. Probably gonna be 14 and a half. Watch. Oh, maybe. Oh, it might be. Porgy on light tackle is actually really fun. It's so fun. But there's some, the blackfish really has like a bulldog fight that, like, yeah. And when you lock into like a really big one. <laughs> What's the biggest you've caught around here? Not even that big. Eight, 18, 19, 18 or 19, something like that. Yeah, he's only 15. The Jersey keeper. Jersey keeper, but right in Jersey, you can only um, keep one right now. But three is hard to get, man. I, I've seen my friend get three, but like later on. Like later on, November. November is when it's just all blackfish. Oh. First, first week in November, like as soon as the porgies leave, that's when it becomes a lot easier and better, I think, because there's less interference and they like, they get really hard on the chew. Sea bass tastes freaking delicious. Sea bass is the best. It's so good. <laughs> the flakiness and just. It's just the taste. Like yeah. you don't even need to really season it. No. Oh. And you know what? Sea robin is, uh, oh, sea robin's pretty good. yeah, it's, it's really not bad. Fluke yeah, fluke is good. Fluke will dry out though, if you're not careful. Really? Yeah. And it does, it does I had one keeper in like early or late May. What was it, like 19 on the dock? Yeah, 20 actually. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, there's decent quality fish. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, that's better. I think it's just going to be barely short again, though. Whoa, maybe not. Maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Oh, yeah, this might be a keeper. Yeah, I think it is. Oh, it's a porgy! <laughs> No way. Dude. Oh, dude, that's the biggest porgy ever, dude. I gotta measure this. Dude, I thought this was a keeper blackfish. Oh, he's only 15. 15 and a half. But he's fat. He's got that girth. Yeah. Man. He's a good one, though. I'll keep him. Just like we were talking about, fresh seafood. <laughs> The bigger ones, you definitely gotta bleed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bleed. Always bleed my fish. It's key. Alright, so I moved shallower and uh, stopped here because you can see that's the fuzz I like to see. I used to fish on it all the time. It produces. I haven't been down. Oh, nice. Oh, oh. Man, nice. I don't still don't think it's a keeper though, but Little thing like that, like, so nice. It's amazing. 
nice. Yeah, no matter what, these things are a blast to catch. They really are. Dang, man. Some big porgies today. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> Sounds like my whole summer. Went out for a fluke, came back with porgies. Oh, yeah. You were wise. Porgy. Ah. In the face. Decent one. Probably another 14 or so. Oh man, look, he had that jig. Nice. Inhaled it. I think that's a black. Yeah. Dang, that, that initial like hook set. They just freak when you when you first hook them. They just are just not happy. Here's the underwater footage. Yeah, it, as expected, it did show up a little bit dark. This is the deeper spot. Got a black fish here, kind of looking at the camera. This deeper area was anywhere from 40 to 50 feet. And I can see here some black fish swimming across the top of the boulder. So there's definitely a decent amount of fish here, but I really didn't see many big fish. For the most part, I stayed on the side of this boulder. You can see here a blackfish kind of gets startled. So as I tried to move the camera around a little bit to see what was going on, you can tell there's some interesting looking debris here. Some maybe sticks and pipes, I'm not sure. But then there's a sphere looking thing in the top corner there. That doesn't really look natural, so yeah, I'm not sure what all this pile is, but uh, whatever it is, it's a decent amount of structure and debris for some blackfish to hold. So knowing that it was going to be pretty dark down there, I did put the camera close to the weight, close to the bait to try to get a little bit better of a zoomed in perspective and so here you see got a sea bass some porgies 
and the bait unfortunately I think got tangled up underneath the camera so you can't really see that in the frame but you do see a good amount of fish coming in I don't know if you recognize it but that's a blue fish there too I saw quite a few blue fish actually on this uh, outing more than what I'm used to and the bait that I'm using here is a green crab even though you can't see it uh, I use mostly green crabs out there at the deeper spot and for the most part of this day the green crabs outperformed both the Asian crabs and the shrimp that I brought so I never really realized this uh, but if you look closely at that sea bass's camouflage, it actually looks pretty close to the, uh, I think it's Northern Star Coral there on the rock. But uh, whatever it is, yeah, it looks like he could blend into that rock really well. It's kind of hard to tell what's happening here, but... You can see that the crab is getting bit up pretty good by that blackfish there on the bottom. And the sea bass is kind of watching him. I don't know if you can hear that sound, but I think that's the mouths of the blackfish just trying to grab the crab too. Now check out the formation that these blue fish are in. Isn't that very interesting how they're just kind of looking down? I had a lot of blackfish just looking at the camera. It seemed to be a very uh, skittish bite on this day. They definitely weren't furiously attacking it, and the ones that were, I think, were mostly porkies. So I know you might be thinking that, oh, this is the same clip, but it's not. <laughs> this just went on for you know, a good amount of time where this blackfish was looking at it and the porgy was getting closer, but neither of them took it. All right, so after about two hours of fishing at that deeper spot, I moved shallower. The tide started picking up and yeah, I just wasn't getting any keeper. So figured I'd try a shower. As you can see, the lighting is incredibly better and water clarity is really good. But I wasn't surprised too much in that there were just mostly small fish in this shallower area. Uh, the tide was running a little bit harder at this point too on the incoming or flood. So that could have had something to do with the fact that maybe they, the bigger ones just weren't, you know, foraging around in these areas. But whatever it was, it was just mostly small fish that you're going to see here. And that puffer attacking what is uh, actually a cooked shrimp. I put a cooked shrimp on the top hook there. And yeah, the little fish just absolutely love it.
once I realized that the clarity was really good, I moved the camera up and added another hook so now you can get a more zoomed out view. On the bottom hook there is a raw piece of shrimp that the porgy just took. And on the top hook, you still have a cooked piece of shrimp. So just testing these things out. I had heard that cooked shrimp works really good, uh, but it really didn't do all that well for blackfish, at least on this day. So I don't know if you can just tell there on the bottom, but there's a fluke that has gained some interest in what's going on. And he's going to stick around for a while, actually. If you look there to the left on that flat rock, there's the fluke. And yeah, he's just kind of looking at all the fish, looking at the action. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, he took a swipe at one of those smaller fish. See a couple more bluefish coming in and out of the frame. and But mostly, yeah, you're seeing mostly porgies. Mostly porgies. Maybe there's a bergal here and there. But mostly porgies, small blackfish. Yeah, there was a puffer there earlier. If you notice at the top left of the screen now, I have a jig with, I'm not sure if it was crab or shrimp at the at this drop here but what I'm trying to do is actually I have a two rod system going on where I have one rod with the camera on it and another rod with the jig and the crab and I'm trying to get that free rod in the frame of the underwater camera to get a you know a more truer sense of what it looks like when you're down there with a jig and a crab I believe that jig head is three quarter ounce and it's a pretty bright orange color which I think is probably good when the water's not so clear but on this day I probably should have kept with a more drab looking color I think after reviewing this footage alright so thankfully here you have a blackfish coming in and taking the crab so you can see how he picks it up no problem at all. Here it is in slow motion. Just one or two jerks of his head, that jig is totally lifted off the ground. And I should be setting the hook. But boom, right there I missed it. I was too late on the hook set. And I missed him. I think I've mentioned this before in a previous video where I was doing jig underwater footage but see right there where he just kicks up a dirt cloud or a silt cloud that's one of the reasons I really like the jig too I really think it see there's a the fluke that came in too I think it just really instigates and catches the attention of a lot of nearby onlookers
This blackfish hit the crab pretty much as soon as it made it to the bottom. Here you see the jig kind of go into that little crevice there, but I'm still not getting snagged. That's another reason I really like using the jig. Now I'm bouncing the jig quite a bit in this clip just to kind of see what it looks like. I'm just trying to, you know, get it in the camera. I'm not really sure what I'm doing. But after seeing this, you know, I do see how once it finally is allowed to kind of settle there on the rock for a little bit, which you'll see, the little fish con congregate and the black fish takes a little bit better of a look. Uh, so you do. I think you do need to keep the jig still a little bit. To just let the fish kind of you know get a good look at it uh, I think it's okay to move it but not too much you see that uh, black fish there on the left how he's just kind of looking at it from a distance now Alright, so in this clip I have Asian crab on both the top and bottom hook. And yeah, Asian crabs got ripped up pretty good. Definitely in the shallower area I noticed on this day, but after looking at the underwater footage, it looks like it was mostly small blackfish and mostly porgies. But they were quick. They were quick on the Asian crab for sure. And as soon as they got it, from the bottom hook though they wouldn't touch it on the top hook so yeah I find it that they really do care about presentation I, I do think that it just looks a little awkward for them to see a crab there floating above the ground you know not really moving in the current alright this last clip is uh, pretty good so check out that rock that the jig just went nearby. Now that's my buddy in the other kayak, his jig that landed right there. And I'm trying to get this all on the underwater video. So if you pay attention to that one blackfish right there, that blackfish, you're going to see him take the jig and actually move, I would say a couple feet. He's moved a couple feet with that jig in his mouth. I'm going to play this in full speed. Wow, isn't that amazing though? Just how fast when you set the hook on them, they go up. So that was a small fish that he caught and yeah, I mean, he reeled it in no problem. But it just, to me, it shows you that you know, everything just happens so quickly. Once they get hooked, they absolutely do a burst of energy. And if you're able to set the hook hard and gain a couple feet on them right off the bat it really does help your chances of getting them off the bottom and preventing you know a break off off a rock or something
So these last few clips, I actually let some line out on my anchor and got closer to where my buddy was fishing and there were way more fish under his boat than there were on mine from the underwater footage. And I think part of it is actually because he was behind my crab chum slick in a sense and so yeah I think there's definitely something to anchoring behind someone that you know you may end up getting uh, the benefit of that so yeah just something to uh, keep in mind Um, an overall pretty good day. Yeah, couldn't couldn't get any keepers. Had one that was pretty close, uh, and they were biting in the shallow just as much as they were biting in the deeper. Uh, there was a lot of porgies to kind of weed through. That's fun though. It's fun overall. So got some porgies. At least I have some kind of a meal tonight. Yeah, hopefully some of the underwater came out. It is a little dark today, so I don't have a ton of light. Probably going to be a slightly dark underwater. Hopefully some of it came out. And we can learn from it. Thanks for watching and uh, see you on the next one.